All right, welcome. I don't think I've really done much of this in early March, but, well, we got our first surf fishing session. I'm gonna rewind the clock a little bit because I honestly thought I was gonna get skunked today. And let's get started around sunrise. And well, we're gonna continue the day from here because it's been a pretty good start. Honestly, I'm not in love with my conditions today. The main reason is the water's still on the cooler side. It's March, but um, I've got kind of like a really big tide with post a heavy north wind. There's a lot more current than I'd like this time of year. I think this time of year I want a little bit less current. Fish are more likely to feed. In the summertime when everything's moving around and hungry, that's probably a good thing, but I don't think that's necessarily the best thing. So probably I'm gonna fish the area with the least amount of current, which is probably uh, the first trough to start. So let's see if we could do anything here. I definitely found an area where, one of the few areas where there isn't too much wave breaking, too many waves breaking. Um, so I got a, probably a pretty deep pocket. A uh, lot of white water today, so let's see. Good side. I like to see. But this ain't a waste of time. Because <laughs> I was worried about that. to tangle my other line here. That's not a good thing. Over. Gotcha. This might be a drum. Please don't be a skate. That's just a sea mullet running in the current, man. Nice one, man. Real nice. Good start, good start, man. On the board, <laughs> I thought, I this still might be a waste of time, but uh, this is at least getting a bite in the first 20 minutes in these conditions. It's giving me a lot off of me. All right, we need some meat for the fridge, freezer, all the stuff. These guys, top notch, man. Uh, yeah, 16. All right, these will eat very well. I think I had a fish on here the whole time. <laughs> I'm kind of concerned what it is right now. It's a skate. Can't say I'm too thrilled to see this guy. Yeah, let me move to a different area. I might have to hop around a bunch today. All right, I'm moving to my next spot. Uh, it's laying down now a little bit, so it's blowing that 15, you know, north stuff, and then it's gonna switch south. So I'm trying to sit around, I guess it'll be worth the time to wait for that nice weather window to catch some more of those whiting. So right now I've got uh, an incoming tide maybe on the switch so let me try to find another pocket that looks kind of like that where the waves aren't breaking too hard um you know the water's in the mid 50s maybe high 50s right now so i don't really want i want to cut i want to concentrate on areas of less current because it, it's pretty rough right now so this is a little bit more flat here but there's a little bit less current so let's see how this one fishes still gonna put the baits in the first trough here we ain't changing anything for a little while probably I tangled myself up like a coop or I got a fish on here. I'm not sure. Let's find out. Got one here. Papa no! What? what? <laughs> it's like 50 degrees out. 
This is definitely the earliest Pompano I've seen by a long shot. I am incredibly thankful to catch this fish. All right, that is the early season North Carolina Pompano right there. How awesome is that? Whoop. So this is the bait for today, super fresh shrimp. Uh, let's see what else we can catch. I gotta get three rods with bait back out there. Hopefully the skates aren't gonna run me out of this spot because it seems like it's good. Got one here. I think. Yep. Not as big, whatever this is. Oh, it's walking down. He jumped on the beach, so. It's kind of an average one. Just in case the bike gets real slow, I'm gonna keep a couple of these average ones. I prefer to keep them larger, but 12s and 13s already have fillets and the freezer's kind of empty. So uh, yeah, let's keep a few of these guys. I am pumped to see if we'll see a few more pumping though. All right, man. So glad to have you back. See you, my friend. Let's see what's up going on here. All right, I think I'm covered in skates. You know those clickbait thumbnails where the girl's got a rod in her hand and it's like captioned the best feeling and all you see is the backside of her in the photo. Somebody's got to make me a thumbnail with like a dude in a bikini and have it say the worst feeling and it's a skate on the end of your lawn. Man, this is crazy today. Like this tide is moving so fast, as in it's dropping out so quickly. Like, pull into the spot, had a few bites from uh, that pompano and two whiting. The skates absolutely trashed me for 45 minutes. And now I haven't had a bite since. Let's try a different stretch of beach. And I, I don't know, I don't know how I'm gonna keep up with it because the tide's moving really out really quickly right now and I don't know the shape of the beach after the winter. So I guess I'll do a little homework, but I'm kind of guessing based on how water looks. All right, the conditions are improving just a smidge. So I'm taking off like the really heavy sinkers. You know, I really don't have too much surf gear. That's, uh, what is this, 150 gram spot next. So it's probably an equivalent to a six in a normal pyramid. I don't, I only fish these on the lighter rods for the most part. So I can, a lot of times right now, why am I fishing with these and light rods? There are so many puffer fish in the surf this time of year typically that you just want a, a rod that you can at least see that puffer fish bouncing because on something that's a, you know, a heavier rod, a lot of times you can't. All right, this looks pretty good to me. The bar is curling pretty hard, but still got a pretty good. All right, got my first bite, bring it up. Seems like these bites happen quick. Get on the spot and there's a fish. No, no, please don't be him. No, it's not, it's not. That's a different head shake. Yes. <laughs> All right, just knowing something's not a, a skate after an hour of skate fishing, it's a wonderful feeling. Well, if this bite dries up quickly here, I already know now. I gotta just keep moving.
See, all these other rods right now have heavier weights, except the steelhead rod. This one got bit two times in a row. So, small nuances, you know what I'm saying? See, on here, I went down to two ounce. Those all still have about fours. That one also has a four. So, you can fish light. It makes a really big difference, I'm telling you, man. Okay, another good sea mullet. You can see too, man. See how the water's rushing and curling here? This is all deep water right here, right now. Like just that rush of water on this wave break and that curl and funnel back forth. Good one right there, man. All right, keeping these guys. What's frustrating about March and the southern part of the state, in my opinion, I think some of the, a large amount of fish move up and down the beaches this time of year from stuff that was either wintering over offshore. There's a huge push of fish moving north, uh, south to north this time of year, but it's absolutely the worst weather of the whole year. All right, this hole gave me three whiting, uh, one skate. So I kind of, I'm kind of just picking up and moving pretty quickly. I mean, I'm giving, I had about 45 minutes of runtime on that camera right there. So I stopped getting any bites. So I did have a couple of small puffer fish bites and uh i think the hooks i'm using are too big and that's okay i've got fish that are you know fillet worthy i don't really want to downsize my hooks too much honestly so let's try one more hole see if i can find another spot that looks similar to this i might you know there might not be that many fish moving around hold you know spot to spot at this time it's an interesting strategy do you stick it out in a spot like gave you a couple fish where you keep just keep keep moving so i started off the morning with two chicken rigs and two of these rigs that i have in my hands right now Got a small hook here. This is a number two circle hook. I like a little offset. Um, a bead if you'd like. A swivel if you'd like. I fish with braided line, so I'd like to reduce my um, my line twist. If you're fishing with mono, you probably don't need it as badly. And I got about another foot here. That's my loop for my sinker. And another foot, the loop for my next circle hook here. These are mostly VMCs I've got tied on. Okay. I think I got a bite right here. Yeah, I do. Let's check on it. Put this guy in pretty close, so... Yep. He's on there. We didn't see a bluefish yet. If we're seeing Pompano, I would think I'd see a couple bluefish ready. All right. What's crazy is this really didn't fish very well last spring because of beach replenishment. It was like light and day waste of time you know last march and april they were doing beach replenishment down there and you couldn't catch a thing out here now yeah you can get them crazy how different that is i got two baits in close this is kind of similar to the zone where i caught that pompano so i figured you know, let me just try the you know a few hundred yards over even on a rough day like today um while more my heavier rods it's kind of hard to tell if i'm getting messed with <laughs> right because you're fishing with a four ounce weight five ounce weight whatever it is and it's like there's a lot of little stuff sometimes and those puffers you either a want to catch them or b want to know they're taking your bait right so that's kind of an important little thing it seems to me 
Um, in terms of other fish, sure, there's a, you know, could be a couple red drum around already. Seeing a pompano, you know, there's Spanish mackerel around already probably. Um, so I see a lot of bird life out there. But uh, yeah, it seemed like having rigs on the bottom with the hooks on the bottom, definitely got more whiting bites. I did not get any whiting on those chicken rigs or high-low rigs, really. Um, so, you know, something to keep in mind. Reels I'm using, I've got two of these Toadfish 4000s. They're really good for like this lighter tackle surf fishing stuff, in my opinion, I do like them. I've got like 20 and 30 pound braid on them. Uh, two of the Jigging World Onyx rods, which are only $100, so very good value, inexpensive rod and uh, the other two are steelhead rods. Actually, this steelhead rod I got last uh, winter. And what's pretty wild about this thing is, this, oh, 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 I'm yapping my lips. Let's see what we got here. I'm hoping this is an escape. Hasn't done much yet. Another nice chunky whiting in the last drop. Uh, this steelhead rod is an old Iowa one. I don't know if they make these anymore, but that Akuma right there that might have gotten hit while I wasn't looking, uh, that Akuma Celia steelhead rod at like 60 bucks, it is awesome for really light tackle pan fishing the surf, man. Uh, really good rod for that. So, hey, we're on. Let's get a couple more baits out. And I'll fish this spot until this bite kind of dries up and take it from there. All right, so this setup looks like something you'd walk right by in the store. <laughs> like, no way am I fishing with this. Um, yeah, each section's got about, I don't know, 18 inches from the first uh, loop to the sinker. I'm using a Sputnik weight. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's working great. All these uh, kingfish family or sea mullets, whatever you want to call them. This is all the Gulf variety. Right now there's a lot of the uh, the southern kingfish in, the, in the, the channels and they got stripes on them. The, these Gulf kingfish don't have any, they're all silvery and they have like a, that black spot on their tail. That's kind of how you differentiate them. So uh, it's kind of interesting. I don't think these ones go too often into the deeper channels like the, the striped southern ones do. So here, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a pop it up. All right, that's enough. That's all I'm gonna need here. The number one thing that's probably gonna determine if you had uh, good fishing success early season and I'm saying anywhere from now through probably most of the summer until a couple hurricanes roll through is beach nourishment man uh, the years that I fished a lot of these beaches and there's beach nourishment nearby the fishing kind of sucks uh, for good long periods of time uh, last year forget it man it sucked here and uh, that seems to be like a pretty uh, big problem for having a good day in the surf so just keep that in mind that's number one uh thing and then number two would be getting the best bait you can um right now fresh shrimps pretty readily available so you get that you'll probably catch a couple of good fish you know yeah and this rod right here this is only a 50 dollar rod maybe 60 dollars tops um i could cast about three ounces on these steelhead rods i really can't go over it for that but um, they're awesome, man. I really, really enjoy fishing with them. If you like fishing for small fish like me, you know, it's something to think about. All right. I was wrapping that one up. <laughs> that is a great big monster. Whiting. Let's see. They start to look like a red drum, right? Uh, all right. 16 and a half. 
man, it's a great size. All right, that's the last one. Let's thank him for biting. Get him on ice and hopefully get back at this soon. I'm gonna try to bring my wife down, do this next week. Uh, enjoy the surf fishing because it's, uh, it's chill, right? It's really relaxing fishing, so awesome. Uh, check the video's description, links, everything used. I'll put the rods, the reels, all the, the hook sizes I used. Uh, I've been, you know, alternating between BMCs and owners. Um, I like circle hooks for the most part when I'm kind of busy. Old school bait keeper seems to have a good hookup ratio too for me. On top of that, seeing Pompano already, that's awesome. So, all right guys, thanks for watching.